Thank you, Patrick and Tim, for being with us today. Um, so I think it's no secret that the movement of being spiritual, not religious, is increasingly popular. And first of all, just so that we can define the terms, if you can explain what are the differences or, you know, before the 1900s, uh, spirituality and religious or spiritual and religious were used interchangeably. What are the differences that you, that you see today? Well, spirituality is really about a personal and individual connection and belief in God, free of dogma, free of um, institutions and free of almost limitations, meaning that you tend to have a more open approach to the pathway to God or the pathway to believing in a higher power, or even worshipping a higher power. Okay. Tim, what, would you agree with that? Yes. I mean, the term religion, religious, has taken on a different connotation, as mm -hmm. you say, over the last hundred years, and it's, it's taken on a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. And spiritual spirituality, which traditionally was under the umbrella of religion, is now seen to be more open, more free, when in fact the growth of spirituality came out of religious traditions. And so why do you think that this has become so popular or so trendy? I mean, we hear it all over the place. People are no longer subscribing or not that they're no longer subscribing, but it is becoming more common for people to say, you know, I don't want to belong to organized religion. Well, I think that's because when a person says I'm spiritual, they're trying to say, I've gone to these greater depths and I've made these choices and I've explored all these various avenues and religions. Doesn't mean it's necessarily true. But the person's trying to say, look, I've really thought about this and this is how I came to this conclusion. I'm not blindly following an institution or one particular religion or line of faith. Okay. And what are the, con not the consequences, but what do you think could be the dangers of not belonging to a church? I think that's for Tim more than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but for me, if I did not have the discipline of, you know, a tradition where required to go to Mass every Sunday, follow, have certain prayers that I can go to, the resources that a tradition offers. If I did not have that, I think I would feel a bit at sea, at loss, and I think I'm not alone in that. So I think that's one danger there is that you can say, okay, I'm spiritual, I'm going to commit myself to praying, to have some kind of relationship with God, but without the structures in place, uh, you can lose some of that. Now, I'm actually going to support something that Tim <laughs> says, which is funny because I'm here to talk about the advantages <laughs> of spirituality. Right. The problem has been that as people moved away from religion, they left religion behind, but they also left a lot of morality behind. So in our society, once upon a time, the very structure and foundation of morality was religion. People have left that behind, but then they haven't taken on their own morality. And so it's become more a case of, well, I'm going to do what I feel like rather than what's right. And so it is easy for someone that believes he's spiritual to just follow fancy free emotion rather than saying, I still need to keep myself in check. I still need to maintain discipline, integrity and morality. Could it also be that people are becoming increasingly non-committal and uh, this whole sense of being individuals and uh, not having to report, so to speak, to anybody else? Well, I think, you know, and Tim will probably agree with you, that there's two extremes. Mm -hmm. You have the extreme of the person who says, look, I feel like I'm being stifled or suffocated in a religion. Then you have the other person who says, well, I can do whatever I want mm -hmm. and just changes their mind on the day. Yes, I think the tradition for a lot of people can see kind of stultifying. But the hope is, is that they can find ways within the community to find kind of practice their own faith, to kind of you know that at least for example with our within the Catholic tradition which I belong to there's a lot of different ways of practicing your faith there's not one set uh, some way of doing things. There's different saints, there's different traditions. Different prayers. Exactly. Yeah, there's a framework for us there. Now, um, you spoke of community, and I think that's an element that a lot of people will also uh, appreciate uh, regarding belonging to a church. Why would you yes, have to say Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think it helps when you have people who share the same set of beliefs, people who can kind of give you the support when you need it in difficult times, people who can share, you know, the resources that they've discovered within the tradition. So I think community is key and essential, and for me, I think doing it all by myself is not very attractive, but doing it with a group of people uh, is, is a lot more satisfying. Community is something that is really an important part of human behavior and, and healthy human functioning. The challenge is if you get in a community that then can move you away from your very faith or belief. So for example, if you're in a church or, or church, synagogue, whatever your beliefs are, and you begin to see hypocrisy or you begin to see that the people aren't following the very things they believe in, then they can actually push you away from your faith. It can stumble you or, or make you say, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm not even going to believe in God. And, you know, that was some of my personal experiences. So at the same time, whilst there is an advantage of community, you've got to make sure that you're in the right community and that you don't end up giving these people 
more power over your beliefs in the sense of, well, I'm going to be told that this is the only way to God. And one of the things that one of the challenges I have with religion is that once we begin to believe in a specific religion, we're saying that everyone else is false. I have the only access to God or I am now claiming ownership of God. And I think that's a real danger. That's not only is that a danger because that doesn't mean much. What it does is it starts to make you judge other people and move away from the very things you're supposed to believe in, which is about love and acceptance and forgiveness. You know, I don't have to agree with you. I don't have to like what you do, but I don't have to spend all my energy trying to change you. I can focus on doing what I'm meant to be doing. I think I would uh, say that judging people is a, a danger of being involved with any institution, that mm -hmm. you judge people who are not involved, judge people who don't have the same set of beliefs as you do. But I think in this case, when people, there's this movement towards spirituality, people within religious traditions should see this as a good thing, to see this as a manifestation of some need, of some desire, and they should find a way to try to meet that desire. I, I don't understand what you mean by that. Desire for what? For spirituality? Yes, yeah, for, for God, for spirituality, for something larger than themselves. One of the other challenges that I also have with religion is if you look at a lot of the history of all of the religions, they have very strong principles and beliefs that tend to be condemnatory and judgmental. Mm -hmm. If you look at the father of the Western church, which was Tertullian and even Augustine, they condemned women. You know, they said women were the evil temptresses. They were an eternal danger to mankind. Now, maybe they'll go back to Adam and Eve, but I don't think that anywhere in the Bible, the teaching or even in spirituality, it's the idea that, you know, we're male, so therefore we're superior. Women are bad, they're evil, they're an eternal danger to mankind. So again, what's happening is rather than a one-on-one -on -one connection with God, we're now starting to say, I'm superior, you're inferior, we're making judgments. Now, I understand what you're saying, but what is, uh, you know, I think that the spirituality sometimes, uh, when someone says, I am not going to subscribe to a particular religion, uh, it becomes just a one-on-one, -on -one, just like you said, with God. Right. And so isn't that also dangerous? Well, it depends what you're doing with that one-on-one. -on -one. If I'm if I'm a person that believes in God and I and I and I'm following my heart in the sense of because something I didn't mention earlier is spirituality is also about service to other people. So if I'm engaging in serving other people in a positive way, mm -hmm. then I don't see that as a danger. I but, don't see that as negative. Well, but nobody holds you accountable. I mean, I think Tim, what would you say about that? Yeah, no, I think that's a danger. Is that we're all human beings. I mean, we have our faults, and it, you know, to, to have that kind of discipline where you're called upon to, you know, if you say, I'm going to be spiritual, I'm going to have a relationship with God or, or the Spirit, um, that, that calls for a certain commitment. And some people can do it, but some people can. And I think for a lot of people, the wisdom of a tradition offers something that can give them the kind of sustaining, over the long term, uh, satisfaction that they're looking for. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We have no more time. I apologize, but I am so glad that you were able to come with us today. Thank, Thank you. you.